Okay, I have been trying to master a light and airy sponge cake for years. The type that you find at the bakery, and I absolutely promise you that this sponge cake recipe will not disappoint. So to start off, you want to preheat your oven to 160 degrees Celsius with the fan on, and line the bottom of two 8-inch cake tins with some baking paper without greasing the bottom. Now usually you would also grease or line the sides, but today we aren't going to do that, so you just want to leave your cake tins ungreased. This is just going to help prevent our sponge cakes from deflating once they're taken out of the oven. So set these aside and in a small bowl, combine your dry ingredients. So I've got a third of a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cornstarch, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just using a spoon to mix that all together. You don't need to sift it just yet. I really recommend using the gram measurements, which are in the description box below and on the blog post. Okay, set that aside and now we're going to separate the yolks and whites from four eggs. So I just like to use my hands for this. I find it a lot easier and my egg yolks are less likely to break that way. Okay, once that's done, in a medium-sized bowl, add in your four egg whites and an eighth of a teaspoon of vinegar. And then using a hand or stand mixer, whip on a medium high for about 30 seconds until it's frothy. And then gradually add in a third of a cup of white granulated sugar. Once that's done, mix on a medium high for a further two minutes and then mix on low for about a minute and this will just help to get rid of any large air bubbles and give you a more stable batter in the end. Okay, so your egg whites should look like this in the end, which is known as stiff peaks. So you should be able to flip your egg whites over and it shouldn't fall on top of you. Now just be careful not to over whip your egg whites because this can cause your sponge cake to collapse when it's baking. So yeah, I have done a video on how to properly whip up egg whites. If you wanna check that out, I'll post a link to that below. Okay, so set your egg whites aside and in a large bowl, add in a third of a cup of white granulated sugar along with one and a half tablespoons of warm water and mix that together so the sugar is coated in the water. Just make sure your water isn't boiling hot. To that, add in your four egg yolks along with two teaspoons of vanilla and then beat on a medium high speed for four minutes and then turn your mixer down to low and then beat for a further minute. Once done, your egg yolk mixture should be thick and you should be able to create kind of ribbons with it like this. Next, you want to stream in two tablespoons of unflavored vegetable oil with your mixer on a medium speed and mix until it's well combined. Now to finish off, you want to add in half of your egg white mixture and gently fold that through until just combined. It's okay if there's a few little lumps, but try not to push out too many of the air bubbles. And then you want to sift in your dry ingredients and this is going to help with that airy texture of our sponge cake and then gently fold that in until just combined and then finish off by adding in your remaining egg whites and again, gently fold that through until just combined. You can use your spatula to gently break up any large lumps of egg whites, but again, do not overmix. Okay, so your batter should have this kind of consistency. And now the next thing to do is to distribute it evenly into our two eight inch cake tins. Once that's done, drop your cake tins lightly on your counter to remove any large air bubbles. And then I like to run a thin knife through my batter to again, just remove any large air bubbles so that, you know, we don't have any big holes when we come to cutting our cake. And now these are going to go into the oven for 25 minutes. Now to check if they're done, just gently touch the top and it should make a little indent that slowly bounces back. Once the cakes are done, the next steps are super important, so you want to make sure that you do them straight away. So first you want to drop the tins from a height of about 10 centimeters to release some of the steam, and then you want to immediately turn them over onto a wire rack while they're still in the cake tins to completely cool. This is just going to prevent our sponge cakes from deflating too much, which is also why we didn't grease the sides, so then they can stay stuck to the pan while they're cooling down upside down. So about an hour later, turn your cake tins over and they should still be nice and risen like this. And then run a thin knife around the edges to release the cakes from the cake tins and then turn them out onto a wire rack. But then you want to flip them over again so that the cakes are the right side up. 
These cake layers are honestly so, so eerie and soft. Now, a little trick to make your sponge layers look nice and neat, this is optional, is to gently rub your hands around the edges of the cake and that dark layer will slowly come off. And then you wanna do the same with the top as well. I also find that these darker parts can sometimes have a slight eggy aftertaste to them, which is why I like to remove them as well. And then you're left with the most beautiful sponge cake layers. Just look at how soft these cake layers are. Now, because sponge cakes don't have a lot of fat in them, they can dry out just a little bit quicker than regular cakes. So in order to keep my cake layers nice and moist, I like to brush them with a little bit of simple syrup. So to make my simple syrup, I'm just combining half a cup of white granulated sugar and half a cup of hot water together, and then mixing that together until the sugar is fully dissolved. And then I'm just using a pastry brush to generously cover the top and sides of my sponge cakes with the simple syrup. You can get creative with your simple syrup too and add other flavors like coffee or do it with a flavored milk, whatever you want. Okay, now to fill this cake, we are first going to be making a raspberry jam filling. It is literally one of the easiest things to make. So you just wanna start off by placing a saucepan over a low heat and add in one cup of frozen raspberries, three quarters of a tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of lemon juice and three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. Then you just wanna give that all a little mix and just let it slowly heat up until the raspberries kind of break apart and everything comes together into a liquidy mixture. And then you basically just wanna keep mixing this for a few minutes until it starts to thicken up. So a few minutes later, this is what my raspberry jam filling looks like. So it has thickened up quite a bit, which is what we want. And now the next step to do is just to take this off the heat and pour it into a heat proof bowl or jar, whatever you want really, and then just let it come to room temperature it will continue to thicken up as it cools. Now I've just popped my raspberry jam into the fridge to cool and in the meantime we're going to whip up some cream. So in a bowl I've got two cups of cold whipping cream and to that I'm going to add two teaspoons of icing sugar and half a teaspoon of vanilla and then I'm using my hand whisk to whisk that all together. You can totally do this with a hand or stand mixer but I like to whip my cream by hand because I feel I have more control that way and I'm less likely to over whip it. And I also find it actually whips faster this way too. Okay, all my elements are ready now. So to stack my cake, I'm starting off by placing my first cake layer onto my cake stand and then spreading out a nice thin layer of my raspberry jam. Next, I'm placing some cut up strawberries all around the top. I just like to halve mine and then place them upside down. And then I'm going to spread out a generous amount of whipped cream on the top and smooth it out with my offset spatula. Then my next cake layer goes on top and you can add more raspberry filling if you like but I prefer just the one layer in the middle so I'm going straight in with my whipped cream and spreading that out and then to finish off with a little bit of decorating I'm just placing some more strawberries on top and that is it my strawberry cream sponge cake is all done this cake is honestly so so light and fluffy I could probably eat three pieces myself but yeah it's perfect as a tea cake or for people who prefer less sweet and less heavy cakes so I'm not taking a bite out of my cake today because Ramadan has started, which is the fasting month for Muslims, and I'm fasting today while I've been filming this cake. So I am going to be saving this for later. But yeah, honestly, this is probably one of my favorite cakes. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. But yeah, if you do try out this recipe, don't forget to leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content reach more people, and I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.